welcome back to CA Declassified YouTube Edition. Today we're going to be learning about psi phenomena and what that means and different types of psi phenomena. So what is psi? Psi is known as the process of information and or energy exchange not currently explainable in terms of known science. Okay, so these are facts or observable circumstances that have occurred and have been observed that we just cannot explain yet. So it doesn't mean they're fake, it doesn't mean anything like that, and a lot of people, that's their big thing is like, oh, well, it's fake. There's proof of it happening, it is demonstrable, like, anyway. Extrasensory perception, or ESP, is the response to external stimuli without sensory contact. So what is ESP then? ESP is receiving information in some form that you probably shouldn't have known based on the laws of current science. Um, so under extrasensory perception, there is telepathy, which is response to the mental state of another person without the mediation of any known channel of sensory communication. For example, identifying a playing card merely by thinking of another person. Um, and then there's clairvoyance, which is response to objects or events that do not provide a stimulus to any known sense. For example, identifying a concealed playing card whose identity, <laughs> whose identity is unknown to anyone. Precognition response to a future event that could not be anticipated through any known inferential process. For example, predicting which digit a random number generator will generate on the next trial. And then there's another category labeled psychokinesis or PK. Psychokinesis or PK is the mental influence over physical events without the mediation of any known physical force. For example, influencing which digit a random number generator will generate on the next trial. Historically speaking, psychic phenomena have been studied for centuries, dating back to the 1700s. As of recent, um, Stanford University in California started researching parapsychology in 1917. Duke University in Durham, North Carolina started researching from 1930 to 1960. Um, FRNM in Durham, North Carolina was conducting research starting in 1960 and they're still presently conducting research. Um, the Mind Science Foundation in San Antonio, Texas started researching in 1960 and they have been researching until present as well. Um, Mayan Mods, uh, I might have pronounced that wrong, please I'm sorry if I did. Um, the Medical Center in New York researched from 1970 to 1980, also re researching from 1970 to 1980, the SRI International um, in Menlo Park, California. From 1980 to 1990, the Psychophysical Research Lab in Princeton, New Jersey, and also another present one started in 1980, the Anomalies Research Lab in Princeton University, North, uh, in New Jersey. Several other private foundations and several university researchers have also been contributors to the phenomena. As for types of investigations, Duke University came up with the forced choice and case studies. Um, FRNM came up with forced choice as well as the Gonsfeld effect and remote viewing and REG. The MSF came up with remote viewing, REG, and um, BioPK, psychokinesis. Maya Minods in um, New York came up with dream telepathy. They studied dream telepathy as well as the Gonsfeld effect. PRL studied the Gonsfeld as well as REG, and Princeton University studied um, remote viewing as well as REG, and the SRI studied remote viewing, research and applied, um, applied remote viewing into like militarization of it, and REG as well as other theoretical phenomena.
So when can psychic phenomena happen? This document here attributes it to both the waking state, like regular consciousness, as well as altered and dissociated states. In the waking state, um, these psychic phenomena come in the form of intuitions, inner knowing, um, just knowing something is going on, knowing something is happening, and as well as synchronicities. So seeing numbers repetitive, like uh, repetitive numbers, seeing animals repeatedly, etc. And then going into altered slash dissociated states, we have daydreams, Gonsfeld effect, which is like a meditation procedure, dreams, um, hypnosis, and trance. And the basic scientific procedure of this protocol is a double blind study and automate, using automated data records as well as details um, being documented for every case. The research center that studied dreams um, came up with some conclusions including openness and self-acceptance in a person is important to getting these types of phenomena. Um, emotional tones are very important, emotional aspects are very important um, of these phenomena as well, and motion plays an, um, an impact in it. Um, waking psi experiences are not important to dream psi experiences, so if you don't experience psi in waking state, um, you can still experience it in dream state. The Rhine Center through Duke University also had some conclusions that they came to, including that most subjects can do clairvoyance and telepathy. Daily fluctuations occur in these abilities. Um, things such as drugs and coffee can affect these abilities. These phenomena such as remote viewing and telepathy work at a distance and actually performance increases were noted when, per, when distance was involved in these research studies. And they've also discovered that rational sensory processes interfere with these phenomena. Some of their other observations were that concentration is required and dissociation actually lowers the capacity to concentrate. And things like self-consciousness also lower the results. ESP is also um, a stable factor. It can be used over time and does not decline. And it may be cyclical and may be below chance for somebody with a negative attitude about Psy. After all of his research conducted in the area, Russell Targ says, we are certain that psychic abilities are a total normal aspect of human awareness and that you can learn to develop this potential sanely and rationally. He also says that anyone who decides for himself that it is safe to experience paranormal functioning can learn to do so. He then continues by saying, the key to learning appears to be acceptance and support rather than skepticism and criticism. So we have all these studies, right? Why hasn't it been utilized? Why hasn't it been accepted by modern science? So for one, modern science identifies things as science based on replicability, saying that essentially you could conduct an experiment the same way I would conduct an experiment and we would get the same results. The only thing is, that's not the case. We don't understand the process of how psychic phenomena works yet, so that's why certain people have been able to reproduce certain results. And also another um, document, another document states that one of the difficulties involved in testing for ESP within a laboratory environment is that the laboratory can rarely duplicate the often extreme and often tragic stimulus found in the spontaneous cases of ESP. So that's interesting. Essentially that goes back to the correlation that I had done in a previous TikTok of mine saying that ESP can cause, like trauma can cause ESP abilities. Not that you didn't have them before, but it can essentially exacerbate them. So because we don't know how it works, and because a lot of the stimulus that causes psychic events can often be tragic and um, very dramatic for us, it's very hard to replicate in a laboratory, especially exactly the same way. Because certain people have different certain capacities, if you will, at which their brain is working, different vibes, different openness. There's a lot of different factors that contribute to psychic phenomena. 
Another potential correlation of psi um, was studied by Caroline Watt from the psychology department at Edinburgh, Edinburgh, Edinburgh. And um, she did a study on defensiveness and psi. Results indicated that individuals who were rated as highly defensive following a defensive mechanism test tended to score below chance on ESP measure where conversely, those who were rated as low defensive individuals tended to score above average, above chance on ESP scores. So this kind of shows that there's a relationship between defensiveness of a person and psi scoring, psychic phenomena. Um, they also concluded that ego stress and an inability to relax can distract from the viewing process and the overall outcome of information. Um, another study, which I'll talk more in depth about when we talk about telepathy, was conducted um, using the Gonsfeld study, and it was the study on ESP and creativity in an exceptional population. So this study was actually conducted by Marilyn Schlitz from the Mind Science Foundation and Charles Horton from Psychological Research Laboratories. And in the study, they used 20 undergraduate students from Juilliard Performing Arts School as the receiver in a telepathy experiment. The students at Juilliard um, achieved a significant success rate of 50%, which is double chance expectation of 25%. Um, that's crazy. So essentially, there has been a correlation proposed between creativity and intellect and ESP. It was also noted that a link between psi experiences and creative ability was also found in people like Mark Twain and Robert Browning. The reasoning for this essentially is that there are certain characteristics of people conductive to psi experiences. Creativity and psychic experiences are expressions of a dynamic, unconscious, emotional, and instinctual life. These people are open to experiences and are one with their environment. They have a high self-esteem, high empathy, and high self-understanding. They also demonstrate an ability for relaxation and dissociation. In fact, they demand openness to new and unusual experiences and often have a tolerance for the unrealistic things. People with side potential show high confidence and levels of usually and usually have success early on in life. They have high expectations with regard to success and are in general high achievers. So again, we have all this research and everything, so why isn't psi being claimed as a science? Well, like I had mentioned, the replicability. Scientists need to be able to replicate a study any which way. For example, the laws of gravity. If I conducted a study dropping you know, my coffee cup, It'll fall at the same exact rate as when you drop your coffee cup, right? So psychic experiences aren't like that and we haven't quite understood and quite found the reasoning for psychic experiences. Certain potential causes um, could also include the geomagnetic activity. Um, several studies have shown that subjective telepathic experiences have tended to occur on days when the geomagnetic activity is quieter than the days before or after the experiences. The effect is quite strong statistically and very similar in all three studies. So again, we found potential causes, potential contributions, potential contributing factors to psychic phenomena, but it's not able to be replicated exactly. So that's the only issue. And psychic experiences often also come about in unpredictable ways. Um, they're also very random sometimes in nature. So that makes it also very hard to study as well since we don't know what causes ESP. We just know that it's there. And again, I know people are suspicious of the CIA. The CIA was not the people that conducted the experiments. They are not scientists. They're the Central Intelligence Agency. They need to know all of the information. So what had happened was the Central Intelligence Agency had come about the information that the Russians, um, Soviets, Ireland, other countries, many other countries 
we're studying psychic phenomena in ESP. So we developed a program called Stargate to also study those phenomena. And here's another list of more colleges and universities conducting psychic research in the Western world. And here is a list of the categories of psychic phenomena. As you can see, it talks about the ESP we talked about, which falls under Psy, as well as psychokinesis, which also falls under Psy. And then it gets into survival, out-of-body experiences, etc. And we'll talk about those in later videos too. One of the current theories behind psychic phenomena would be quantum physics. And that's currently still being researched, to my knowledge. As I had mentioned, we are not the only country that we're studying psychic phenomena. As I had mentioned, it started actually because we had realized that the Russians and Soviets were studying the psychic phenomena and we were behind. We didn't know anything about it. So a lot of the research actually that was inspired, like our research was inspired by the research that had been done by like the Soviet Union. So for example, this document talks about parapsychology in the Soviet Union and it says the science of parapsychology includes special sensory biophysical activities brain and mind control telepathic communication or bi